Welcome. We're going to talk about container gardening today. Container gardening is not a not a big deal. Um, and, uh, it's not a mystery. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about vegetable container gardening and a little bit about uh, flower container gardening. Please just prepare those questions and, and, and uh, it'll keep the whole thing fresh. The whole thing with container gardening that's with flowers for a, an attractive entryway or a display is thriller, filler, spiller. I used to do this talk for the Richmond uh, Lawn and Garden Show in Richmond, Virginia, and um, I had two buddies and, and we'd do this thing where we go, thriller, filler, and spiller, <laughs> to try to again. But what you want is an element in there. Now, this is all in one pot, but you could have the same elements in separate pots. Say you wanted three or four different pots grouped together. So you want something tall to draw the eye. You want something in the center of that pot to fill it out. And then you want something to pull out and over, again, to draw the eye. Uh, your color choices will be up to you. You're, when you. When you talk about color choices, you're getting into the artist part of it where they do the color wheel and the U's and the, all that stuff. I am not an artist. I have no talent in that regard. Um, my finest drawing was a stick figure, and that's the end of that. <laughs> but remember, thriller, filler, spiller. Those, that's the elements of, of a uh, container gardening. Tall plants are placed in a position of prominence. Uh, now, you don't have to use plants. You can use sticks. Um, you can use something else that's tall. You could use a garden sculpture. You could use, uh, but what you want is to draw the eye. And if you're drawing the eye, it's got, that part of it's got to be tall. Um, filler plants fill in the bottom in the tall pl uh, of the tall plant and fill out the container. Contrasting colors and foliage and flowers adds interest to the entire look. Filler plants tumble over the side of the container. That one is, uh, that's either delphinium or larkspur in the top. Then you've got a petunia. It looks like a wave petunia from um, the way it's growing. And then that is a sweet potato vine. That's the limey green. Those do yield sweet potatoes. And at the end of the year, you can eat them if, you're so, if you so desire. Um, <coughs> now... The sweet potato vine is not an annual, but it will die as soon as it gets hit with any cold. The petunias are an annual. That's why they're flowering so very much. The secret to keeping an annual flowering is to pinch off, to deadhead it, to pinch off the spent blossoms. The reason for that is all the energy in that plant is going to, blo to the bloom because it's an annual, and after that, all the energy in that plant is going to production of seeds because it's an annual. So if you pinch it off, you deny the plant the ability to propagate by bloom and seed or by seed, and the plant will put out more blooms to make more seeds. Remember, the goal of that plant is to produce seeds so it survives next year or the year after that. That is either larkspur or delphinium. If it's delphinium, it is the perennial version of larkspur. If it's larkspur, it's the annual. So delphinium is a, a perennial. Larkspur is an annual. They look very similar. Larkspur has less blossoms, has the same height, however. Larkspur will, if you have a field someplace where you can leave it undisturbed, larkspur will reseed itself. And it comes in white, pink, lavender, purple. Uh, thriller choices. These are choices for your pot um, or pots. Remember, you don't have to have them all in one pot. Uh, elephant ear. That's your nice, tall, big. Uh, there's tons of different elephant ears. There's black elephant ears. There's limey green elephant ears. There's green elephant ears. There's little bitty elephant ears. There's big elephant ears. There's uh, veined elephant ears where the veins are prominently different in the, in the leaf. Then, so there's a ton of different choices. It comes from a bulb. Uh, usually when you buy the bulb new, they have, uh, I forget what exactly it's called, where they take out the main node on the bulb 
to let the smaller ones come up because the if if you don't have that main node, the smaller leaf, you'll get multiple more smaller leaves. The energy in that bulb will go to be producing more leaves. But if you leave that node alone, then you get a whole bunch of, uh, the, the leaves will be big. Yeah. Big, big. I always had trouble knowing how to explain it. Which way? The elephant ear can be tough. The bigger ones usually are a teardrop, flat on the bottom. Pointy, pointier, not not pointed, yeah. but more pointy at the top. Um, yeah, it's tough to tell. Um, if you look at it real close, there's kind of layers of flesh on the bottom, and and then and it'll be flat on the bottom. That's where your roots are going to come out. Then as you get to the top, a lot of times there's just the remnants of a stalk. And this is with many corms and bulbs. You can, and if you, can, if you can identify that stalk, you know that you're, you've got the, the top pointed in the right direction. If you cannot determine whether a corm or a bulb, which side's up and which side's down, then plant it on its side. That way, the roots, you, you give it a 50% chance. <laughs> the roots are going to come out and go down on this, on this, this side, and the stem's going to come out and go up on this side. I, it's just hedging your bets, guys. <laughs> okay, where did I start? Oh, Dracaena. That's that, that red spiky plant. Again, this is a tropical. You know, a lot of your interest in, in uh, container plants for flowers is in the, the summer months because not too many people seek out unless they're in the middle of a mall. Um, agave species, you know what those are, right? Agave is what you make tequila out of, though I doubt that you'll find any around here that you can make tequila out of, but it's a large fleshy, it's, it's a succulent, but it's a big succulent with big old fat leaves, and it grows in the deserts. But it makes a lovely center interest plant. Uh, tall grasses. Um, I love tall grasses, uh, especially in, in a place like uh, Stones River Battlefield. You see all those stems, of gra the brown stems of grasses. Those are blue stem, and it's a native grass, and it's really cool looking when the wind blows and they just do this. It's really, really fun. Um, tall flowering plants, larkspur, that's an annual, delphinium, that's the uh, uh, perennial version of the larkspur, snapdragon, lavender, yucca, ferns, hosta, iris, cana. Tall flowering plants. Sticks. You can use sticks if they're attractive. I meant to bring some, and as usual, I uh, forgot. Um, but you can use all kinds of sticks. Birch sticks work good. Harry Lauder walking sticks work great. Uh, red, dog, dog, red twig dog work, wood works good. Something to pull your interest up. And then you can use a little trellis with something that climbs up it if you would like. Again, you've got to support that plant at the bottom while you're displaying it at the top. Here. That one is the Dracaena. We've got our, uh, the far right one is the Dracaena with it looks like uh, geranium, which used to be called geranium and I think it's pelargonium now. That is a coleus at the bottom. And the, that red vine I think is probably a sweet potato, but I'm not positive. Then, see this? We have container gardens that have all three elements on the left, but then we have two more container gardens, which are basically fillers. So we have all three elements, but they're in three different pots. And then the same thing here. That's a, well, I think that's a uh, variegated iris with, uh, I can't tell what, and ivy. Um, if you use ivy in your container gardening, ivy in this area is invasive. I mean, by all means, use it. But if you let it run use, loose in your yard, you're gonna, you're gonna be, you you got your work cut out for you in a couple years. Ferns, tall element, snapdragon. Look at those. Oh my. Um, and delphinium, and larkspur over here. That's not a very good picture. I apologize. Okay, fillers, agastache, hyssop. Sometimes you'll see this advertised as Mexican hyssop. It is an herb. 
uh, basil, green or purple, also an herb. Caladium species, uh, they have caladium in the stores right now, but it's still too cold to plant them. I wished I'd looked that up before I planted them last week. I'm not digging them up and doing it again. Um, Celosia species, coleus, and euphorbia, uh, snow on the mountain. There's lots of euphorbias out there. The uh, latex in the stem can cause skin irritation, so just be aware. There's your agastache. Well-drained well soils essential, and you will have well-drained soils in all container gardenings if you have a hole in the bottom. Uh, now, if you want to lighten your container gardening gardens, say you're going to move them around, instead of putting soil in a big pot, like a big pot, like a big pot, um, you can put water bottles with the lids on or styrofoam or different things in the bottom of that pot to make it easier to move. You can put it on wheels, too. Uh, you know, we're, we're trying to make it this easy on you. Water bottles? Water bottles. You just take the water bottle, you put the little cap back on, or even, you don't really have to. But that'll take up that space, and, and, it, won't be as and it won't be as heavy. You only need about this much soil at the top. Um, this Agastache is, it's um, all Mint family plants have a square stem. So if you, have a, if you wonder, just rub the stem between your fingers. And if it's square, you'll feel it squared off. It's in the mint family. Uh, this is fragrant. The butterflies and the bees love it. Uh, yellow, orange, coral, red, burgundy, lavender, purple, and purple blue. Great for pollinators, native, drought, and heat resistance. It's a good plant. Basil, green or purple. Flowers are attractive in arrangements or left on plant. Um, if you allow the flowers to bloom and develop into seeds, your plant will decline immediately. If you want your plant, if you want the leaves on the plant, if that's your goal, then you got to make sure that it, the spiky flowers don't um, develop. It. And 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 um, so. And, but if you want the seed, let it go. This will not, if this is outside, it will not last through the winter. It, it's, it, it won't. And it makes a good filler because it comes in a green and a purple. So you get the, the really wonderful colors. Plus you can eat it. Caladium. Uh, warm soil, 65 degrees. Great filler. Treat as an annual in zone 7, but I have had it come back. And we are in zone 7. Um, Lift, dry, and store in a frost-free environment, pink, white, red, green. Um, my feelings on pulling plants up out of the ground and storing them in a warm place or uh, someplace else. Um, several times I dug up a bunch of plants. At the time it was caladium, or not caladium, canis. I put them all in bags, and I had like 10 big paper bags of canis. And I put them under the house, and I put them in the shed because I was going to keep them for next year. Well, next year, all the ones that I missed and left in the ground were just fine. But the ones that I put in the shed and under the house froze solid, and they were a black mess. <laughs> so, y'all, do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> but but y you risk f freezing them when you pull them out of the ground, too. Coleus. Coleus is, again, in the mint family, same rules. You let that puppy go to flower, um, it will start to decline. Coleus will give you a little bit of extra time, though. Just pinch, pinch those little spikes of flowers out of there. Um, starting right there, started from seed or from cuttings. Grown for foliage, not their flowers, which can be pinched off. Very cold sensitive and will be the first to be affected by cold overnight lows. This because of the way it grows, can be a thriller, filler, or a spiller. More fillers. Balloon flower. Flowering maple. That's another good uh, thriller, is maple. The, the uh, Japanese maple. Lantana species. Lantana species are toxic, so just be careful around them. A lot of things that are toxic just means that they'll irritate your skin. But some things that are toxic will, will really screw up your digestive tract, so don't eat it. Don't eat this stuff out of the garden. <laughs> um, ornamental cabbage, now eat that. You can eat that. <laughs> um, Dusty Miller Swiss chard. You can eat Swiss chard. It's pretty. Cabbage and lantana. And your coleus. Some more. There's your purple cabbages. 
Uh, they can stay nice well into the winter months. Uh, your lantana, which is also likes it warm, somewhat tropical, and then your coleus, which will uh, die at the drop of a pin if it goes below 30. Dusty Miller, you get that nice white color. Swiss chard, the red uh, veins in the leaf, and your celosia, which is also your coxcomb. It looks like a little brain. You're going to get the spiky kind. Comes in the red, the yellow, pink, purple. Um, but there's also one that grows like a little brain on a stick. Have you seen it? The okay. Uh, soils for containers must be well aerated and well drained. This rules out garden soils in this area. Unless they're amended, you can amend your soils with perlite, vermiculite, peat, anything organic like leaf mold. Uh, you just want to lighten it up. No, no heavy, heavy clays. Uh, container soils are also are often referred to as soilless because if they don't incorporate some dirt element and just use peat moss or core um, and your vermiculite and your perlite, then, then technically there's no um, dirt in them, which is not a bad thing because dirt, um, when you have dirt, unless it's sterilized, you could be introducing bugs into your uh, planting. And if you introduce bugs into your planting that come from the soil, uh, you could be, uh, bugs a lot of times are vectors for disease. The rose rosette syndrome is, is vectored by diseases. Uh, uh, soils for containers must be well aerated and well drained. This rules out garden soils in this area. Unless they're amended, you can amend your soils with perlite, vermiculite, peat, anything organic like leaf mold. Uh, you just want to lighten it up. No, no heavy, heavy clays. Uh, container soils are also are often referred to as soilless because if they don't incorporate some dirt element and just use peat moss or core um, and your vermiculite and your perlite, then, then technically there's no um, dirt in them, which is not a bad thing because dirt, um, when you have dirt, unless it's sterilized, you could be introducing bugs into your uh, planting. And if you introduce bugs into your planting that come from the soil, uh, you could be, uh, bugs a lot of times are vectors for disease. The rose rosette syndrome is, is vectored by diseases. Uh, are vectored by bugs that are carry, it's vectored by a mite that carries the virus from plant to plant to plant. So no matter how much love and care you give this rose bush, you can't stop that mite from coming over from this rose bush. Uh, do not use fine sand. It doesn't drain. Use coarse sand only. If you mix sand and clay, you get concrete. <laughs> A lot of times people will say, mix sand in your dirt, it will improve the drainage. If you mix sand and <laughs> clay, you get concrete, which can be fun. You can make little, oh, never mind. I'll use that for another talk. Um, Garden soil can be used if it is amended, and that would be organic material. Um, if garden soil is used, it can contain in insects, diseases, and weed seeds. There are tens of thousands of weed seeds in every few top inches of soil. Every time you disturb the soil, um, you give those weed seeds the opportunity to grow. You're like, here, here's some more water, here's sunlight, go, go. So that's where the whole um, uh, toil, or er, <laughs> uh, where the farmers don't till their fields, the, that's the whole thing behind that, or one of the things behind that. Um, soil mixes are heavier and don't dry out as fast, and soil mix, soilless mixes are easier to lift and move. Again, we're back to be, I'm old, and, and hauling around 100 pound Pots of dirt is no longer on my list of things that I prefer to do today. Um, here's your color wheel. This is your artist. Uh, we have hues and we have complementary colors and we have colors on the opposite side of the we uh, thing. Um, I was a florist. I'm not an artist. I just mix up what I like. 
three primary colors, three secondaries, and six tertiaries. Your primaries are your red, yellow, uh, uh, red, blue, and your yellow. Um, secondaries are orange, green, and violet. Tertiaries are mixed by mixing a primary color with a tertiary color it next to it on the wheel. And that's as much information as I'm capable of. Monochromatic, these tone on tone combinations use several shades by adding black and tints, adding white, complementary scheme. Analogic scheme for a bit more contrast, an analogous palette includes colors found side by side. Contrast creates an adventurous palette by using three hues evenly spaced on the wheel. Complementary scheme, two hues opposite each other on the color wheel. So, color wheel. Monochromatics color scheme. You see, all shades of yellow, all shades of lavender, using the same filler, thriller, spiller. Those plants are all osteospermum. Well, there's some mums in there. The, one, the purple ones with the white center and the uh, iridescent uh, um, cone in the middle, that, those are osteospermum. Those are uh, from Africa, and they, uh, they can't take the cold, not at all. But they're a great, great plant, really spectacular. Very, they're iridescent, literally. The, ins the, the middle of that plant is iridescent. It's called osteospermum or an African daisy. You'll see them in the, the stores. Uh, when it gets warmer. The other one, the, lav the lavender spiky ones are um, mums and the white ones are mums. The white mums that you see in a floor shop and the white mums that you see growing on the side of, of or the white daisies that you see growing, those are actually mums. Mums are a very important part of the florist industry. Contrasting, your purples and your yellows. That's your lantana, and that's a morning glory with that, ir that magnificent purple. And there's some kind of leaf in there that I can't identify. A triad creates an adventurous palette by using three hues evenly spe spaced on the wheel. So you got your purple, you got your orangey yellow, and it I can't tell if that's a white, but you see, that is a very pleasing palette, and it reminds me of Halloween. Complementary color scheme, two U's opposite each other on the color scheme. That would be your green and your purple, or your green and your burgundy. Your, I love limey green. It pulls your eye in the garden just like, it, like nothing else. Planting your container. Pick container of the correct size, materials, and colors. You want plants in that container that grow with similar needs. So similar fertilizer needs, similar water needs. If you put a succulent in there, it might survive for a good long while, but eventually the plant that needs the most water is going to get all of it, and the plant that needs the least water is going to die from root rot. So it's best to put plants together that grow well together. Place medium in the bottom of the pot, arrange plants in the container, add additional soil and water. Sounds pretty... Again, we've got um, that spiky plant that I've just lost, Dr Dracaena, um, and that's the Jenny, creeping Jenny at the bottom, creeping out, and then the, looks like some geraniums, and what's that red, is that another geranium? And then there's something purple in there, and I know that's not a geranium, it might be a bachelor button. Again, the creeping jenny is going to give you the br that limey green. The, the geraniums will give you uh, the medium green with a hint of red around the inside margin of the leaf. And then the flowers of the geraniums. Uh, geraniums are supposed to repel. This is anecdotal. It's not based on science. Uh, geraniums are supposed to repel flies. Don't know for sure. Let me know if you all try it. And it works. Theme container planters, salad containers, herb containers, pizza containers, succulent containers, water gardens. Pizza container is when you, you plant the elements that you want on your pizza in the same container. So it's tomato plant, 
basil plant, oregano plant. <laughs> there is a pepperonia plant, but I don't know if it's edible. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So you want to make a pizza, you just put all the plants you're going to use in your pizza in the same planter. <laughs> <laughs> you want to make a salad, you put a bunch of different salad plants in the same container. People do, uh, gardeners, they just do these things. <laughs> water gardens, uh, you can have a, li you can even have a water garden in a, in a nice container. It's, it's, uh, there's a papyrus that you can grow that's very attractive. And then you can have that little uh, water lettuce in there. Um, but yeah. Have fun. <laughs> Herb plant container. Basil, chives, parsley, tarragon. There's your parsley at that end. There's your basil at that end. Your chives in the middle. And tarragon must be that tall, spiky thing in the back. Pizza plant. There you go. Tomatoes, basil, garlic, and onions. I'd throw some oregano in there too. But uh, uh, all these plants gr grow well together, so it, you're not violating any succulents in containers. These are becoming real popular for gifts for funerals, low maintenance. <coughs> I've tried that in the ring. Um, you, got, you line the ring with moss, and then you put in a a growing medium, just like a potting soil, and then you put in your um, succulents. They're supposed to be a new, now, some of the grocery stores have good prices on succulents in the summertime. Uh, water gardens, there's your papyrus, look at that, is that not cool? Ah. Uh, water lotus and reeds, uh, and there's also a, a equisetum reed that, that it can be your, your tall element. Um, it's horsetail reed, and it grows in this area. Vegetables. Same rules apply to planting in the in in to planting in containers as in the ground. Is there enough soil depth? You need six to eight inches. If you have a raised bed out in your yard, you need six to eight inches of soil to accommodate plants. Um, you need at least eighteen. In you need eighteen inches for a tree. That's why when you look at all these uh, grocery store parking lots and they have trees in the medians, you need 18 inches. Do you see 18 inches there? I don't see 18 inches there. So it's just to, they plant the tree and wait for it to die and then they plant another tree. Um, is there enough sunlight? Most of your garden vegetables are going to take full sun. Very few vegetables grow in the shade. Uh, is water available? You don't want to be hauling water. Uh, plant soil mix in container, plant seeds, and water. Those are different kinds of containers. You can even grow potatoes in bags now. You can grow anything in bags. They, they sell these, these uh, fabric bags. And uh, I'm, I'm, grow, I'm going to be growing potatoes in a bag. And, and when you grow potatoes, you just throw some organic matter in. And uh, you cut your potatoes, let, the, let them seal over. Throw some organic matter in your bag, which is w what I'm going to use. Or you can put them in the regular garden. Um, and then after the potato, with an eye, you put it in the bag after it's sat for a couple of days so that it hardens off. Then as the potato grows, you just put more material in the bag, a little bit of dirt, a little bit of, it's a great way to get rid of your leaves. <laughs> and then there's a lot of time, there's a little flap on the bottom. And when you want potatoes, you just open up the flat, stick a flap, stick your hands in, drag out a cup of seed potatoes, and cook them for breakfast. It's, it's kind of fun. <laughs> but it's that kind of fabric that they're, they're doing this. And a lot of people are doing this in their houses. Vegetables suitable for containers. Radishes, spinach, lettuce, onions, garlic, peas, beans, squash, tomatoes, Eggplant, Swiss chard, turnips, carrots, um, cucumbers, rhubarb, okra, pepper, and chilies. Now, whenever you plant a plant in a container, you increase its, first of all, you're exposing it to a zone more higher, a zone higher in its need in, in heat. 
So if you have a, a plant that grows well in zone six and you put it in a container, it could easily be exposed to temperatures that are more typical of zone seven. It will also be exposed to temperatures that are more typical of zone five because there's air around the outside of that container. So it's getting more heat and it's getting more cold and it will dry out faster for the same reasons because there's a lot of exposure to the elements around the outside of that plant. When you plant seedlings, you want to study or take a good look at your soil composition. Your soil should be 25% air spaces for water, 25% 25 air spaces for oxygen, because your plant roots need oxygen too. 25% organic material and 25% other stuff. So you need that, you need that mix. But if you're going to buy it in a bag, you're fine. Okay, and then the next thing is hydroponics. Um, these plants are usually planted in some sub. This is this is the the commercial or the next level container for what he's talking about. These seedlings are planted in these cups and set down into PVC pipes, where a solution, a nutrient solution, is washed over the roots and then allowed to continue on. And there's nothing washing over the roots. There's your oxygen requirement filled. There are also hydroponic systems where they use rock wool. They plant the seed or the plug in rock wool and they suspend it in these holes. It's not in a cup holding the, the medium. And again, we have a solution going across this that's got the nutrients in it. Uh, Smyrna High School had a greenhouse with an aquaponics hydroponic system set up to where they had a, a great big tub with goldfish in it. They took the goldfish water ran it over the roots of the plants, then cycled it back to the goldfish. The plants took the nutrients from the goldfish pee and poop and used it as a nutrient to grow, and then cycled it back, and it just it was one continuous system. And if you want a pedicure, you can take your Susan socks off and you can put your feet down into the goldfish container and they'll eat all the dead skin off. I, that's, that's an aside, that's not a gardening topic. <laughs> they say it tickles, but think of a way, that's a great way to get the dead skin off your feet. Uh, but uh, yeah, so hydroponics is an option and it is a container technically. Uh, plants grow faster and experts suggest that plants grow at least 20% faster with hydroponics. Uh, yields are 20 to 25% 20, bigger. No soil required. Hey, the marijuana people are having a ball with this. <laughs> <laughs> Hydroponic growing takes less space. Plants don't need to grow extensive root systems to obtain the nutrients they need. Takes less water, systems closed, reservoirs are closed, and the systems are sealed. So you're not using, losing a lot of water to evaporation. Um, you can also do this in a closed environment using lights uh, to generate for, for uh, photosynthesis, so it can be done in a basement, anywhere that, that. If you don't have any more questions, I thank you for standing, staying here and listening to me. I really appreciate it. <laughs>